Hi everyone, I'm Jordana Rell and this is Inside Israeli Basketball. When construction on Maccabi Haifa's home court, Romema Arena, is completed next year, it will become one of the most modern basketball facilities in all of Israel. Owner Jeff Rosen was on site to see how things were progressing. is going to fall down and the other uh, wall the two is going to fall down and so we're going to have a, a complete circle of fans it'll be yes. the two corner sections and then this will be the midsection yes this is the first major reform renovation that we've done and it's going to be like a brand new stadium so it's going to be a very exciting time in this city You know, Romember is a great traditional place. It's been here since the 60s. I started coming here when I was nine or 10, every Sunday to watch the game. After it, when I grew up, I, I played here for a few years. I grew up here, so I know what was before, and I'm pretty excited to see what will be uh, when, it, when they will end it. We're finally going to have our home. 5,000 seats will make us the second largest facility for basketball in the country. 1,250 each uh, side. So equal sections? Equal of, section of 1,000. So nearly 5,000, including the yes. floor seating. Yes, yes. It's going to be a large crowd. It's going to be a big green crowd in this facility. Yeah. Hopefully it'll be green. I think it will help the, the players. They will feel that they are playing in the highest level uh, clubs in Europe. And I'm sure it's going to improve everybody involved in this club. It seems like it's going to be the biggest gym in Israel and the greatest. And to tell you the truth, I want to sign another year just to, to play them. Uh, ready to get in it. That would be beautiful for us to get in that gym and bring some fans in there and win some games. It kind of makes me want to play there and have a good year this year to the fans are supportive and behind us next year when we move there to kind of have the best fan base in Israel, in the best stadium in Israel. As a dream, I can say it right now, I hope that uh, I will coach the first uh, game in this gym. We're going to have to do this for next season. Are we on schedule, sir? We are supposed to finish it in the end of uh, March uh, 2012. I can't wait for opening night uh, in a year from now. 212-213 season with 5,000 sold out fans in Europe, green color, uh, screaming for our uh, opening night victory and for a great season that we're going to have. It will be very beautiful. Bombonera. <laughs> we look forward to it. Haifa's current home, Nesher Arena, has been doing just fine providing home court advantage, as we'll see in the Haifa report. The first four games of the season have given Maccabi Haifa great reasons for optimism. On the one hand, three very tight losses by a combined six points have made clear that all that was needed was a little push to turn things around. And on the other hand, a blow at home victory over Galil Gilboa showed the full green potential in all its glory. Haifa entered its game against Barak Netanyahu with that thought in mind, fully resolved to fulfill its potential. Haifa got off to a slow start and the guests took advantage, taking the lead in the first quarter. But a dunk by Silvan Landisberg and a three-pointer by Carlos Powell managed to shrink the difference. In the third quarter, chances of a win seemed bleak for Haifa, as Netanya was still leading 70-75. But then came the fourth quarter and with it, the Green Revolution. Four points by Powell and another great three-pointer by Ben Chimol brought Haifa ahead 81-77. From there on, it was the Sylvan Landisberg show. The guard had an amazing game, notching a career high of 35 points. And Williams, the league's leading shot blocker, kept swatting the Natani shots away. 
At the end, a great victory for the Greens at home, 104-94. A week later, Haifa headed south dash Dud, and they came in strengthened by the return of point guard Jermaine Jackson. The game was close right from the beginning, and the host didn't make the Greens' life easy. But Haifa still managed to close the first quarter with a two-point lead, 21-23. Mickey Gorka's charges continued to play well in the second quarter, and the points kept coming. 41-36 to Haifa at the end of the first half. The game stayed very tight in the last two quarters, with the lead swinging between both teams. One minute to the end of the game though, Ben Shimon stole the ball, and two free throws by Williams tied the game at 75 in regulation. In overtime, it was all about Avi Ben Shimon. He scored all his eight points in the extra period, and Haifa finally managed to win a close one, 85-86. Sylvan Landisberg with Haifa's top player with 24 points, and Sean Williams contributed 20 points and 14 rebounds. Haifa came back home to Nesha to host last season's champion Maccabi Tel Aviv. After two important victories, the Greens started with a ton of confidence, showing no fear of Tel Aviv's star-studded team. The guests got off to a 12-0 run in the first quarter, but good game management by Jermaine Jackson enabled Haifa to shrink the yellow lead by the end of the first quarter, 19-13. By the second quarter, the Greens woke up and started to shine, and a run of great moves by the Haifa team kept it ahead, finishing the first half 37-36. Haifa was much more focused than Tel Aviv in the third quarter. In the 28th minute, Ben Shimon gave Haifa the lead again with a huge three-pointer, 50-47. The game was extremely suspenseful in the fourth quarter. Jackson kept confidently leading the team, and four straight points by Tyler Wilkerson, crowned by a huge three-pointer, gave Haifa a 63-59 lead with two minutes to go. It looked like a sensational green victory was in the making over the champions. But a deep jumper by Blue, 10 seconds to the end, brought the Yellows back, tied at 65. The game went into overtime, and there, thanks to Richard Hendricks' heroics, Tel Aviv cruised to victory, leaving Greens with a taste of a missed opportunity. The Malka Arena in Jerusalem is a tough place for any guest team, and the Greens came to the game ready for a tough fight. And tough it was. Jerusalem started off well, with Haifa managing to come back thanks to some great performances by Sean Williams. The second half was all red though, and Jerusalem ran Haifa out of the gym and route to a blowout victory. Tyler Wilkerson was Haifa's top scorer with 22 points. Despite the last two results, Maccabi Haifa continues to have a lot to look forward to, and Mickey Gorka has a lot of good reasons to be optimistic. The team is getting stronger and learning from its mistakes, and the future looks greener than ever. One of Maccabi Haifa's biggest acquisitions this season is Carlos Powell. We see how he has already become one of the team's leaders. Then, Coach Offer helps Powell find some holiday cheer in Nazareth. Carlos Powell is one of the newest members of Maccabi Haifa. The former college star and veteran of several international leagues, Carlos is Haifa's Mr. Versatility. It doesn't matter which position, Carlos stays on the floor. He's strong, he's quick, and he wants more than everything to play defense. Carlos Powell knocks it away. He can shoot, can post up, can handle the ball when he needs to, really good passer. I think he brings a lot of energy defensively too and kind of looks to shut people down. He has great penetration, both sides, great finisher. There's Powell up and under, acrobatic move by Carlos Powell. I have to guard him every day in practice and I'll tell you it's not easy at all. With his frame and everything, it's hard to you know just stay in front of him and stop him from going to where he wants to go. You have the passion like for the game. He wants to run every time. He will make defense the hard he can. Really role model to be a professional. After playing his collegiate ball at the University of South Carolina, Powell has built a long list of professional experience overseas. His career now brings him to Israel, where he has already proven to be a fierce competitor. We talked a little bit last season about coming to Israel. Uh, 
I was still indecisive. I really didn't know too much about it. Uh, I had a couple guys that came out here last season, and I talked to them over the summer, and they told me it was a really nice place. I like it. And uh, my agent, you know, came in with the team, Maccabi Haifa, and uh, ever since then, man, it's been really cool. They had a struggling season last year. Uh, they really needed a leader and somebody to step up and help them get to the next level, and I think that's why I'm here. Lowe's, he's like a general out there, you know. He tries to keep everybody together. He's a leader. He's very smart on the court. It's like he knows all the time what, where the ball needs to go, what, what everybody needs to do. He knows the game. He's been at it for a while, and it shows on the court. You know, his vision, his knowledge of the game, it all shows that he, you know, has been playing for a while. Paolo hopes his vast experience can help lead Hyper back to the Final Four. But basically, you know, you start off every season you know, hoping to do better than your last season. But uh, our main goal was, you know, take it a day at a time and, you know, try to make the playoffs this season. You know, you can't win a championship overnight, so your first goal got to be a small, big baby step. Wherever his career takes him, Powell tries to immerse himself in the country's culture and surroundings. Assistant coach Ofer Rahimi took him to see his hometown, Nazareth. Okay, Los, as I promised you, this is the city of Nazareth from above. You see the triangle here in the middle? This is the main uh, church of Nazareth. Christians from all over the world coming and visiting this church. Very, very important. Now, the special thing about Nazareth is you can see there are mosques for the Muslims uh, religion. And just next to it, you can see many churches. I really think that this place is, is unique because we are living together peacefully. American players in Israel don't always get a chance to go home for the holidays. So visiting Nazareth, the hometown of Jesus, was the best way for Carlos to get into the Christmas spirit. I need to find out what all of this is. So Carlos, this is the announcement place that uh, St. Gabriel announced uh, Maria that uh, she's having a baby. This is one of the most sacred and holy places for the Christianity. So you see, Carlos, you are worried about being away from home in Christmas, but this is the best place to celebrate Christmas. Okay, Carlos, as I promised you, we are going to the best candy place in Nazareth. Nazareth is known for its candy, and this is the special knafe and special Arab sweet. Let's go and taste it. Yeah. yeah. Hello, my friend. I would like to buy this big fellow the best sweet here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> they put syrup on the top? Ah, that's good. Why your teeth will fall out if you eat this? <laughs> Man, it's just sweet. But it's good though. It's really good. Hello. Welcome. This is McClower. Uh, McClower? Oh, yes. This? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. this is <laughs> Okay. Very, it might be sweeter than what I had downstairs. Okay, thank you. I like it. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. Coach Miki Gorka breaks down his guards and top players as he puts together a playoff contender. We're now two months into the Super League season. The standings feature some old and some new teams at the top. After week nine, it's a tight race at the top of the Super League standings. Last year's championship game teams, Maccabi Tel Aviv and Galil Gilboa, vying for first place. After losing the team's top player, Jordan Farmer, to the NBA, Maccabi hopes their deep bench can fill the void. Galil Gilboa has continued to play strong after losses to Tel Aviv and Haifa early in the season. The team features a balanced scoring attack with six players averaging double figures. 
Israeli veteran and former Haifa captain Ido Kujikaro recently hit a milestone by reaching 3,000 career points in the Super League. Leading the league in scoring is Maccabi Haifa's Silvan Landisberg. Now in his second professional season out of Virginia, Silvan averages a dominating 23.6 points a game. His best game so far came against Netanya with a career high 35 points. Coach Mickey Gorka broke down the team's backcourt in a recent film session with owner Jeff Rosen. How will the rotation work this season with the guards? We've got four good ones. Yeah, uh, we are looking right now. The way we, I'm thinking is uh, to start with Simon, we do the shooting guard, and Paul will start with the small forward. While Avi uh, will come from the bench, and we also have Tamir Ariely that can give us uh, minutes at the point guard position, and uh, Farin the shooting guard position. And I expect, I have a lot of expectations from our guard. I think uh, the talent wide and the athletic ability, we can uh, dominate, uh, be a dominate team in the guard. With the recent re signing of Jermaine Jackson at point guard, Coach Gorka is confident in executing his game plan. First of all, uh, we are playing a lot of uh, pick and roll. And it's very important that uh, our guards will uh, make the right decision coming out of the pick and roll. They need to be able to create for others. And the second thing that is very important, they will be able to deliver the ball to our big guys. Because we, are, uh, have, we have very good big guys and we have advantage on other teams in the past. Many of our offenses will start when Powell will get the ball on the post up. And uh, Finland will be more of the shooting guard. On the offense end, our team is very athletic. Our smaller guards and our bigger guards, we can all pretty much do the same thing. Uh, shoot the ball well, you know, handle the ball well. So, uh, you know, if, you're, if your guard coming in, just got to be aggressive. Sean Williams sets the pick. Lansford goes up. You can't let a guy like that shoot like that. And on the defense end, you know, just, you know, you got to play a lot of help defense. The big guys kind of protect the paint for us. And, like, you try to keep your man in front of you, but you trust that if you do happen to get beat, you know that you have great help coming behind you, block shots or alter shots, and just good rotation from everyone. We like to, uh, to put uh, a lot of pressure on the guards of the other team. And uh, we are playing a lot of switching defense. It means that our guards uh, need to be able uh, to guard the big guys of the other team. And so far, we are doing a decent job in this area. When we return, Coach Gorka finishes breaking down his post players, arguably one of the best front courts in the league. Then, Avi Ben Shimol introduces Sylvan Landisberg to one of the holiday's most fabled animals. Coach Gorka's film session with Jeff Rosen continues with an analysis of the players in the post. What are we hoping to achieve with Wilkerson? He played with us the end of last year. He's got the starting position this year. What are you looking to see him do this year? I'm hoping and I'm looking for him to continue and progress because he finished the season last year great for us. And we just want him to continue with what he did last year. He's supposed to score. He's a guy that can give us 15 to 20 points on the east side and also shooting the trees. First of all, for a big man in the offense, it's very important to be aggressive, really aggressive. Woods down to Aiden. Nice positioning by the big guy. And go hard to the boards, every offense rebound, and uh, give good picks to the players and run the offense well. They need uh, to read situation out of pick and roll. When I'm uh, rolling quick, uh, some players like uh, Ty Wilkerson, we, uh, sets, we have a couple of plays that he's pick and pass because he's a very good three-point shooter. We have uh, players that, can, uh, that have nice post uh, moves, so we like to, to post the ball inside and let them walk. Powell down low with a rejection by Sean Williams. Another emphatic spot. He's sent that almost out of the gym. And on defense, uh, again, like we said about the guards, our big guys, which are very mobile, uh, can, they need to defend the guards. Coach Sean Williams is ex-NBA. We know he comes with a reputation for being quite a defensive player. Has he met your expectations? Is he the Sean Williams we were expecting in Israel? 
he met and even more. He surprised me. He's one of those guys that understand defense, but uh, more than that, he's a guy that likes to play defense. And it's very hard to find today players that they want to play defense. About the defensive end, it's all about trust, especially when you have Sean Williams under the basket. We can like so-called cheat on defense because you can lead your man to him and no one gonna score on him. When we're thinking about uh, him and Wilkerson together, which is the power forward of the team, we should have the two of the most athletic uh, big guys in the league. It's the holiday season. Point guard Avi Ben Shimol thought it would be a great idea to have teammate Sylvan Landisberg get up close and personal with an animal that's center stage in some of the holiday's greatest stories. Sylvan wasn't so sure. What's up, man? Charlie? What up, Charlie? You want you need some help? Wow, Sylvan. Oh, Ooh. Charlie! <laughs> Can we go? Can we take Charlie right here? Let's go, baby. <laughs> Can I take him home? He likes me. I give you 50 shekels for the camera. Avi and I here are actually chilling with a live holiday legend. Wait, 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 wait. What do we have to do? All right. So, for all of you in America, for me in Israel, we wish you happy, happy holidays, holiday, guys. <laughs> Oh, that's not good. good. Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> that, that's the second one. Yeah, I'm out. <laughs> that's all for this edition of Inside Israeli Basketball. Remember to follow Maccabi Haifa all season long on TriangleInternet.tv. So long, everyone. <laughs>